Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. This video is all about texture paste, what it is, how to make it, how to use it. More specifically, we'll talk about how to make texture paste using three ingredients that you probably already have in your home. And if not, we'll talk about the alternative ingredients. We'll also talk about how to get any color you want during the application stage rather than trying to make all different colored texture pastes. We'll discuss how to apply the texture paste two different ways using stencils or no stencils. And finally, all the fun stuff, all the projects that you can make and all the different ways you can use your DIY texture paste. All right, let's get started. So what is texture paste? All right, the term texture paste is usually used interchangeably with the term modeling paste. However, there is a slight difference. Modeling paste is usually a little bit more heavier bodied and basically they're used for the same thing, to add texture to your paintings, your projects, your journal covers, all sorts of different things, which of course I will share with you in this video. All right, so this is the purchased modeling paste and this is the texture paste that I made in this video, sharing the recipe with you. And this is also the texture paste that I used for all of my projects. And of course, you can have it thicker than this. You can have it more like a modeling paste. We'll discuss all the things. So I say, let's just get to it. Three main ingredients are talcum powder, acrylic paint, and PVA glue. PVA glue is just a white glue. It's like a um, Elmer's school glue. So very inexpensive. They don't always say PVA glue on the bottle, but in most cases they do. And it's really, really inexpensive glue, depending on the brand that you buy. Like this one here, also PVA, it says wood glue. It's PVA glue. So if you don't have talcum powder, you can use cornstarch instead. And you will also need acrylic paint, preferably white. If you don't have white, any color will do. Just inexpensive acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be anything special. Okay, next thing you need is some sort of a container. It has to be an airtight container. I'm going to use this one. Uh, it's still got some residue from the previous batch that I made, but I used it all up. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this container. The recipe is the following. You need two tablespoons of talcum powder one tablespoon of white paint or acrylic paint and one tablespoon of white glue. Now the recipe is not as important as the consistency that you get. So you might find that some acrylic paints might be a lot more runnier than others and same goes with PVA glue. So if you follow the exact same recipe yet you're using different type of glue or different consistency glue then your final product, your texture paste, is going to have different consistencies. So the recipe is a starting point, but the main important thing is the consistency, which I'm going to show you how, what consistency you need. Okay, so we're starting off with two tablespoons. That's one tablespoon. So I'm going to do two of these. All right, so it all can be a little bit approximate. It doesn't have to be, you know, uh, exactly. That's probably a bit too much. I'll put it back in here. All right, there we go. Next up, we're going to use acrylic paint. If you wish, instead of white acrylic paint, you can use a colored acrylic paint. Here I have a blue texture paste. It's actually very much lighter than what it's showing up on screen, but that's irrelevant. Here I have gold texture paste. So at this step, you can add colored acrylic paint, or even better, you don't have to, if you have white acrylic paint, Go ahead and add the white and I'm going to share with you how you can achieve any color without actually making colored text texture paste. All right, here we go. I've added one tablespoon of white acrylic paint and now that can all go in there with the talcum powder. Next, we're going to add one tablespoon of PVA glue. Oh, that's a little bit too much. It will be all right. In it goes. I forgot to mention that when you're working with talcum powder, might be a good idea to put on a mask. You know, probably better not to be breathing in all those tiny little particles. And now we're going to mix it all up. And the, the most important thing is for you to see the consistency. It's very, very satisfying, especially if you add colored paint. It's so satisfying to see everything come together and mix and I just love how this looks. I did the colored paint thing before I found a way of adding color dur during the application stage, if that makes any sense. 
so it's really not necessary to have all these different pots of different colors you can just do white or any color for that matter you can do blue and then change it to white all right so here we go consistency is key the recipe not so much it's the consistency so if you have a look at this this is not good this is way too runny so i added too much glue way too much glue so if you see this happening too runny just go ahead and add some more talcum powder and i'm just gonna eyeball it just popped in a little bit and now i'm gonna mix this up let's see all right still runny so i'm gonna add more talcum powder The only reason why this is happening is because I'm filming. I, when I did this with, uh, you know, before I started filming, the two tablespoons of talcum powder and, you know, the recipe I shared was perfect just the way it is. I didn't have to add anything. But because I'm filming now, of course, things are going to, you know, not work for me. So it's probably good that you see this so, so that I can, I suppose, emphasize the point that the recipe doesn't matter so much as much as the consistency. All right, now... This is looking much better. So when you're picking up the texture paste, you can see that it kind of either stays put or it takes a long time to drip down. So that's the kind of consistency that you want. See that? It takes a long time. Let me show you the consistency of this blue one that I made. Look at that. See that? That's the kind of thing that you want. It's almost like there's a little bit of movement, but it stays on your palette knife or you know whatever implement you're using. Let's have a look at this gold one. You can see a lot more movement in the gold one. So this gold one did work, but what happens is if you have uh, if it's a bit too runny this one probably could be less runny so i did find when i was using this one in my project sometimes it would bleed through the stencil or the edges wouldn't be perfect if that makes sense all right so this will also depend on the stencil that you use but if your texture paste is too runny it can bleed underneath the a stencil so i mean this can happen anyway but you can see that there like it's much easier for it to do that when your texture paste is running uh, as opposed to for example this one here you can see there's no bleeding it's perfect impression and it's just a really cool stencil i admit but it's also you know perfect edges and no bleeding so that's why the consistency is important and actually, now that I'm showing you this one, I want to show you how I made this. I'm just going to tell you how I made this texture paste, which really bring, brings me to my next point, which is what else can you use? I happen to have clay in my house and it was just sitting around waiting to be used for something. So I made texture paste using this clay. Who says I can't experiment? I tried it out and it worked. And this is the texture paste color that I got from using uh, red clay. Actually, I was using this one here. You might happen to have some clay lying around your home. Who knows? You know, this is mostly used in skincare and face masks and that sort of stuff. So that's that one, the red one. And then I also used yellow clay, revitalizing and cleansing yellow clay, which is also good for texture paste. And, you know, I was thinking along the lines of, well, if I can use talcum powder and cornstarch, you know, what else can I use? So I also have this pressed powder, makeup, you know, pressed powder, and the color is all wrong. Um, and, you know, it was just a really cheap thing. So I thought if I can, I haven't tried it yet. I'm just showing you this to give you ideas that you can experiment to try different things. This here is also clay white clay so perfect that i have these and why not i mean what's the book oh, isn't this mostly talcum oh, i don't know could be saying stupid things let me see all right i googled what are pressed powders made from and they're made from a first ingredient is talc second ingredient is kaolin which is clay uh, especially white clay see kaolin so then if I can use that and I can use talcum powder, well, then why can't I use this? If you have one in your house, I don't know, 
you know it's oftentimes we find these cheap little makeup things and we think yes this is gonna make us look beautiful and then it doesn't and then we kind of hang on to it because we spent money and so yes there we have it why not give that a go another thing you can try i said cornstarch uh, baking soda exactly the same recipe i haven't tried it personally but i was going to i mean not quite the same thing but give it a go another thing i wanted to experiment with is adding sand that's going to give you awesome texture like do the make the texture paste and the reason why it's texture paste is because when you apply it to a surface it adds texture to the surface well imagine applying texture to the texture paste like sand for example and then you have this you know if you're making paintings if you're making journal covers and you don't need stencils we'll discuss that later uh, so you can have your texture paste extra textury all right let's move on to the next thing how to get color during the application process so this one here for example i did with that yellow clay that i was showing you before this one here i did also with yellow clay and the red clay but i wanted to show you this one this is also the red clay this one here i don't know how well it's showing up this is yellow clay but then i added purple color to it so i don't actually have purple texture paste and that's when I, what i wanted to share with you today i thought that you have to have a particular color to get the particular color or i thought that you had to kind of paint it at a later stage kind of like what i did here so i did this years ago so i didn't really know what i was doing but i actually added the texture paste which is just white and then i painted trying to be very careful painted each thing with my color of choice so it was a painstaking process and i mean this is so much easier what i'm going to show you now why didn't i think of that before you probably know how to do this but if you don't because i didn't i'm going to show you all right here we go i have my paper i have a stencil that i want to use and we'll discuss you know if you don't have any stencils we'll talk about that next i have my texture paste that we've just made which is white but let's say i want it to be red first off i'm going to show you how to apply the texture paste through the stencil it's like a quick little tutorial here and using this plastic palette knife you just need something flat i'm gonna grab some texture i mean some texture paste and holding the stencil in place i'm just gonna apply it on there you can glue the stencil down i mean use some sticky tape to hold the stencil down or you can just uh, just use your hand make sure you're not moving the stencil around that's the most important thing and make sure that the stencil is not lifting up off the paper occasionally you will get some bleeds no big deal it's just part of the process and you know it's just no big deal and just paint it over how satisfying is this look at this it's like icing on a cake and once it's applied and i make sure that it's kind of all over i start to try and get it flat you know because say for example this petal here if i don't smooth it down my impressions are gonna have you're gonna see those strokes if that makes sense i'll show you what i mean when i'm finished here holding the paper down i'm gonna lift the stencil and hope for the best let's see and there we go and that looks really beautiful you can see perfect edges and i think this texture paste could even be a little bit thicker so i could i don't know if you can see oh there's a little bleed here i didn't notice that there it is so i think it could be even a little bit thicker maybe i can add a bit more baby powder so you will know when you get really thin paste it's just gonna go all over the place all right so that's uh, that's just how you apply through a set stencil and now i'm going to show you how to achieve a color any color you want it's handy to have a piece of paper like this next to you where you're going to clean off your stencil and then you get all these random impressions on your scrap piece of cardstock just an idea see that and you know i can add paint over that cut it up into little embellishments and so on so before you continue using the same stencil you have to clean the back 
because otherwise it's gonna leave marks on your next piece of paper all right next piece of paper and i'm gonna repeat the process with the texture paste okay now that the texture paste is applied get your preferred color i mean i feel even a little bit silly showing you this but you know what i i don't know i didn't think of this right away so i'm sharing it leaving the stencil on go ahead and pop the color onto your tool palette knife and just go over the whole thing <laughs> all right how simple is that let's do it that's it we've added color over the top and you can get graduations of color you can add a little bit of gold here and a little bit of i don't know purple here and blue whatever you know and then you can get all different colors i'm gonna lift this up now but i have a feeling there's gonna be it's not gonna be perfect because the I think there's going to be lots of bleeds because I kept taking my hand off the stencil and the paper was lifting. You cannot see here. It's lifting off the page. You can see here. And then when I go in with the color or with more texture paste, it doesn't matter. That's what causes bleeds as well as runny texture paste. So let's just have a look. So it's actually the impression. So the raised bits are actually perfect. There's no bleeding, but I didn't do a very good, a good job of adding the color. And this is something that you would keep in mind when you're working on your project. So, you know, you would make sure that you get color evenly everywhere if that's what you're after. So, for example, here I missed a spot and, you know. So, for example, if this was something that was really important and I needed to have perfect color, of course, I would spend more time making sure I add that color on. But then I can also come back later when this is dry with my little brush and just add a bit of color where it needs it it really doesn't need much you know it's pretty it's actually pretty good all right i think and you can add any color that way and this is gonna dry and it's just going to be fabulous look at this it looks like little bits of glass glued down okay so now that we've spoken about the stencil design I want to move on to the things that you can do if you don't own a stencil all right we'll talk about that next who needs stencils when you can create something like this with texture paste? How cool does that look? I created this journal cover. You can see that beautiful texture used all around on the back. And that's what we're going to do next. However, I just wanted to mention, I do have a video on making stencils. If you wanted to check it out, I will link it up here and in the description box down below you can make your own DIY stencils. You don't need to purchase stencils. Okay, now let me show you how to create this. For that journal cover I just shown you, I just used cardstock like this. It's not very thick cardstock, but you want something thicker. If you're working on just standard computer paper, you might get lots of warping. So cardstock is the way to go. I'm gonna trim this down in half just so we can move through this step a bit quicker. Okay, you have your cardstock and you have your texture paste and a palette knife or you can use the popsicle stick anything to layer on the texture paste i'm gonna go with this and then you just have a play this would be really cool to add sand in your texture paste to make it even more textury i might flip it around So you want areas where you have raised surfaces and then you want areas with flat surfaces so that there's more variations. You can do things like this, for example. You know, you can do things like this. Just have a play around. For this one here, you can see I didn't go right up to the edges. I kind of left it like this. So the edges don't have any texture on them. For my journal cover, I went right up to the edges with the texture paste. One question you might have is whether the texture paste will crack. I tried not to add too much texture paste on the spine. I kind of kept that in mind, you know, I had my paper folded down first and then I was applying the texture paste. So you can see lots of texture here, not so much here next to the spine. So let's say in this case, I wanna go all the way up to the edges. I would simply protect my desk and then just bring that texture paste all the way to the edges. 
and here we go so all that texture paste is added i love this part here you can just go ahead and play around with the different kind of designs and squiggly lines and whatnot now this needs to dry so i'm going to pop it aside i'm not sure if i'll be able to finish this today in this video because it has to be fully dried before adding the acrylic paint but i just quickly want to show about how you can achieve this color uh, the variations of color and in this journal this was kind of my inspiration i suppose you can see those colors so that's what i wanted to recreate on the cover so the first thing that i did is i painted the whole thing brown now when you start painting with your acrylic paint you will notice that the paint is going to it it's going to be leaving areas that are not colored because everything is kind of up and down and wrinkly so it's quite nice not to color the whole thing so i'm not sure if you can see some areas i didn't this here you know and here it's it's quite nice to leave the underneath not cover the whole thing but in any case this one here i just went with my brush colored the whole thing brown first and then i added two more colors gold and red so first i used the brush like this went over the whole thing in brown acrylic paint next to add a little bit of red you can see a little bit of red here and a little bit of red kind of all around instead of using a brush and having brush strokes i used a brush like this with a tiny little bit of red color and just did this just smushed it down a little bit let me show you actually let's pretend this is my textured paste paper so we have to pretend there's all the wrinkles right and i've painted it black you can use any color you want and now i want to add a little bit of accents in you can do any color so i get a little bit of color on my brush so that when i start adding you can see that it's gradually adding a little bit of color rather than a whole bunch of color like this and then you have these areas with this you know concentrated blobs right so you kind of want to avoid that then you start it's not really showing up on this black paper is it let's do white you'll be able to see on white and then you just start adding when i'm doing it on white you can see the brush strokes but when you're doing it on your textured paper you won't be able to see these definite kind of impressions and then i do a little bit here and a little bit here and next let's say i want to go in with my gold tiny little bit of gold on the brush and remember you're going to have the peaks and valleys so when you lightly brush it it's only going to pick up the gold on the raised bits so you would just do something like this very lightly this isn't the best example because this cardboard is flat so it's kind of you can see the brush strokes but let's do it over here you want to add color very very gradually otherwise you're going to end up with blobs I don't know if this is helping you might want to see you know exactly how i did it and this is how i did it so i went in with the red this was my kind of like a trial piece and i loved it and then i applied the same technique onto this cover now that you know what to look for you can actually see here you can see my brush little things that i was doing and then i picked it up with the gold so you can see the brown underneath the red here and there and then the gold I wish you could see it in person it's quite beautiful and so easy to do in any case that's how you do that next thing i want to do is give you lots and lots of examples of projects that are made using the texture paste one of the things that i found when i was doing research for this video is there's lots of uh, videos on how to make te texture paste and whatnot but i was specifically looking for inspiration on how to use it in projects and making junk journals like how do you use it and there really isn't a specific type of a video that's going to show me all different ideas. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to show you all of the projects I made using the texture paste to give you lots of ideas. All right, let's start off with this one. This is just a book cover and it was this color. I need to go back and paint on the inside and make it into a journal. But I painted the whole thing brown. You can see the spine is showing through a little bit. And then I used this stencil. This is a this came out of a really cheap children's stencils for like so they can outline, you know, borders and stuff like that. So it's not very good quality stencil. And you can see even here, you know, there's a raised bit in the middle, and it just wasn't perfect. So I didn't get a perfect impression. Like on first glance, it looks perfect but when you look closer it's not that perfect so you know i can i'll make it work so basically that's all it is 
popped my stencil down and off I went. Another thing I wanted to mention is when you're applying the texture paste, I don't know if you can see how thick this is. You know how I was, when I applied the texture paste, I was kind of removing and evening everything out. By doing that, you get a thinner raised bit. You can have it thicker by just layering up a thick layer of texture paste, right? And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I wanted to talk about cracking because I did notice that that's one thing that a lot of people were asking. Will it crack? Okay, on something like this, I think the thicker the layer, the more chance of it crumbling and cracking. I can tell you now, this journal cover I made many years ago. I actually have a tutorial on uh, doing this cheese, cheesecloth technique. You can see that, the cheesecloth. So I made this cover and then I did the tutorial. And anyway, so that's texture paste and that, I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's there to stay. So no crumbling, no cracking on that one. When I was creating this journal, I knew that I'm going to bend it right there. I knew where the bend is going to be. I think if I had thick texture paste layers here, I think that they probably would crack. So, you know, just keep that in mind. All right, so we've seen this, we've seen this, but have we seen this? No, we haven't. Look at this paint, painty paper that I did years ago. See, I knew it's going to come in handy one day. So anyway, I have that painty paper and the texture paste is right here. You can see the front cover. I used this stencil here, you know, not my favorite. And then what I did is I went in with some watercolors and I just did watercoloring kind of all over the thing, you know, to create those different effects. The butterfly gives the whole thing life and it's a little journal. You know, now that we're talking about journals, let's just stick with the journals. All right, so this one here, again, texture paste, butterflies here and at the back, it was just a little piece of, uh, what's it called, scrap of paper that I had, nothing too thick, you know, and I just did a stencil butterfly. This is the stencil that I used. Then I was thinking, what am I going to do with this piece? So I just folded it in half and created a, like a little mini uh, notebook and I did this whole thing never did this before and I really love how it looks so I'm gonna come back to this idea most definitely in the future all right so that's journal number one or journal number I don't know what notebook actually here's another two example there's another one with the butterflies just just this is like just cardstock for card making that I tea dyed and I used the red clay texture paste and that's all that is. This is the stencil I used today in this tutorial. Same thing again, made a little notebook, nothing on the back. And you know, you can see, but you can't feel, I wish you could reach through and feel this. And the whole idea of the texture paste is to add texture. Now there is a little bit of a difference between texture paste and modeling paste. Even though they're usually used interchangeably, I just wanna show you this first and then we'll discuss that. These are journal covers that I made a long time ago. I just didn't finish them yet. And for this project, I thought, oh my goodness, how cool is this? This is actually removable. Look at that. I absolutely love this stencil. So I created a whole lot of pieces on cardstock. This is yellow clay and red clay. Look at how cool that looks. So you can see the difference between these two. This one here has a thicker layer applied and this one here has a thinner layer applied. So you can see how the lettering is quite thick. Uh, you know, there's a difference. There's a little bit of a difference between the two. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what is that stencil? Like, oh, all right, we'll come back to this. The stencil that I used, these two stencils, and you know what? I don't know where I got them from. I have no idea. So I don't know if you can maybe take a screenshot and do like a reverse Google search. I should have done that before filming, just didn't cross my mind. But I mean, you don't have to have this particular stencil. Like you can just get a, a, an idea of what to look for. So I absolutely went crazy with these stencils. I wish I knew where I got them from. And then of course, one thing leads to another and I thought this stencil needs to be like front and center of a journal cover. And then I remembered I have, you might've seen these journal covers that I did a while ago and I remember having them there and I thought you know this is absolutely perfect 
and I also created another little thing using that same stencil so you can see you know just one little stencil and you can just go crazy with all the different things you can create all right so that's that one I think that's my favorite I think these journals are my favorite for this project I mean okay here what I did is just a flip down little thing like a little notepad and you can see this here is an envelope uh, that I made you know into an envelope you see and it's just one large piece of scrapbook paper that I trimmed down I don't know maybe it was this way it was a large piece of paper that I applied the stencil and the texture paste over the top and I wasn't being very careful so this is what I was mentioning before if you don't get flat lines you know on large areas like this you will get like this kind of texture thing which can look nice but it, it can also look messy so this does look messy so what I did after it's dried I went over it with some ink and just like this you know because I wanted to kind of take away from that messiness and I just kind of went over it a bit all over okay so if you create large pieces like this you can trim them down you can make tags envelopes all sorts of little things this is again i use that stencil that you've seen and you can see here right there i mean it's not looking great there was a bit of a bleed and i used a sharpie marker to go over it and it's kind of visible you can kind of see it so not a fan of that there's a bleed here as well it's no big deal unless it's been pointed out you probably didn't even notice when you look at it like this so this would look cool for many different things including a journal cover next thing i did is i went ahead and added it to envelopes so for this one here i just added it to the envelope flap so i actually covered the rest of the envelope went in with my stencil popped it down and you know the rest that looks really beautiful on this dark envelope that i have these metallic envelopes and then these bits are the bits that are this is all for card making so you know i found these in second hand shops and stuff like that and then i have lots of envelopes and here's another one where I pop the stencil down and look at that absolutely beautiful so you can see this one like you can see here it almost has a bit of a sand effect because I didn't do the mixing properly when I did my clay texture paste so if you were to add bits of sand how cool would that look you can see here a little imperfection where I didn't have a perfectly straight layer or flat layer no big deal but that's another way to use your texture paste and envelopes. Speaking of envelopes, I have this fabric envelope. I have a tutorial on making these fabric envelopes. I'll link it up here and the description box. And then I added the texture paste directly onto the envelope. So beautiful. And the reason why I want to show you this is because this is fabric. And as you've noticed, I have done it on fabric. I've done all sorts of different stencils. Here, you know, this is just uh, color, some sort of calico or muslin. And this is the red clay texture paste. Just played around. So you can really use it on any material. I haven't tried using it on acetate and plastic, but fabric and paper and cardstock and all that. Okay, let's see if it's going to crack. So let's see. Oh, I don't know. I feel bad. I don't want to ruin this piece. Let's just choose one little square. If you fold it let's see will it crack if you do that it kind of does crack a little bit you can see so keep that in mind I did keep that in mind when I was creating these two journals because I knew I wanted to do some sewing you can see I've done sewing on the covers and I was wondering I was afraid actually if the texture paste is going to crack and then my cardstock underneath is going to show and you can see I went with my sewing machine right through the texture paste and there's absolutely no cracking see it does not affect it negatively in any way so unless you're gonna take your artwork and like scrunch it up and put it through a washing machine then you know you might want to worry about the cracking or the crumbling but in this case I'm not worried about it if you're using stencils that have large areas like this okay if you're using a stencil like this with small little areas then you have you don't have to worry about the application and it being flat if you're using stencils that have large areas like this then 
when you're applying make sure that you get even 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 layers so and sometimes no matter how much you try like you can see here you might still get those like drag marks i suppose but the reason why i'm showing you these tags see all that different stencils this is another stencil of a cockatoo and you can see that i've sewn right through all of them and there's no issue with the sewing machine or the texture paste cracking here's another one just a large tag with some butterflies they turned out really well you know sometimes you'll get really really good results sometimes you might get a little bit of bleeding for this kind of thing tags i don't worry about the bleeding but if it's on a cover like this for example then i might want to fix it up so let's see if you can see up close look it's never a good idea to look at things really really close up but i just want to demonstrate a point so i don't know if you can see here this whole section bled through so this whole section was covered in texture paste the texture paste is still there but i painted it with the brown color underneath so that there's separation from these parts it's not all blended into one i just painted it another thing that i did here is this is uh, me cleaning the stencil so i just cleaned the stencil on um, packaging paper i keep this paper anytime i get an order and i always think this is really cool for journal pages and all sorts of projects so i was cleaning my stencil that was before i thought i'm just going to use one piece of cardstock to clean it so uh, that's why the impression isn't perfect so i created this really messy grungy looking flip down notepad just for just a little fun project that i did uh, because the image here is not perfect you know we just went with that grungy theme i added this little piece here that i have i added a little off cut piece of these fabrics that i was showing you when i was trimming this down there was a little off cut piece on there it went and then this is some clothing article that i tea dyed and did a little bow up the top really simple quite a cute little grungy thing that can go inside a, a journal using up all of your not so perfect texture paste applications another thing i did and this one is really really fun you might have seen a video a little while ago where i did diy alcohol inks so i will link that tutorial up here and this description box down below and basically what this is is we're using old markers like you from your kids or grandkids or whatever markers that run out and we create alcohol inks and that's just photo paper and i get all of these beautiful little backgrounds and now i'm kind of like stuck with you know we can do all sorts of things which i shared in that video from tags to like all fun stuff okay and then naturally when i was doing this project i remembered these and i thought oh that's gonna look so good those backgrounds are gonna look so good with the texture paste and of course white texture paste is the way to go because it just stands out so good look at this here and it i love it and over here you can see i did a little bit of doodling on top just little dots it's not really doodling but it is an idea you can go ahead and doodle on the texture paste parts you can do the same thing on any background paper it doesn't have to be this any colorful trapbook paper which is what i did here but you see it's just not coming up as well as it comes up on this so it could be you know this stencil the butterflies it's quite thin little parts and it's blending in with the background this is one of my fails i'm going to show you some fails after i show you all of this stuff that i actually like maybe larger stencils like this will work better or something with like definite outlines i'm not sure in any case i love how this looks another thing i did is apply the texture paste directly on some tea dyed pages and i have them ready to go into journals so you know things like this watercolor paper that i had previously tea dyed went ahead and used my white texture paste with purple acrylic paint you can see that purple acrylic paint coming through this is the blue i mean i'm not in love with this one here's another one just really simple add those uh, butterflies and these pages are ready to go into a journal this can even be like a mini journal cover for perhaps a thin little notebook or it can be the first page in a journal you can also go ahead and add it to uh, you know book pages like this this is a dictionary page just go ahead and add texture paste on anything that you come across why not here's another example of me doing a scrappy little tag that's going to go into a journal 
with an image that didn't turn out so well. So I can't remember if this is me cleaning the stencil, must have been, because there's all these areas missing and bleeding and there's a bit of paint. So this is just me cleaning the stencil and of course I can use those things up, just rip it up. And you see, book page, a little bit of a paper ruffle here with just some leftover paper strips, these little bits of paper, just ruffle it up just like that. So simple, doesn't get any simpler than that. Uh, ink the edges and stitch it right on top. Perfect. Speaking of that raffle, you can see up here, did the same thing. Then this one here is again the packaging paper and then that lifts up to show a little journaling, like a secret journaling spot and that, that lifts up and then inside here I bound some pretty pages. I actually let, had this leftover piece from the tutorial I did not that long ago. Of creating large matchbook notepads or little journals. I'll link that up here as well. I don't know, you might want to explore all the things that are available. So in all honesty you can put anything on the front of your little thing that you're making but why not put some texture paste on there. It's all about the senses and of course don't forget the sound. All right what else do we have? Just a piece of cardstock and that's the same stencil you might recognize it it's this one here actually this is the stencil and this came out of a kid's stencil book so it doesn't have to be professional stencils from professional scrapbooking stores you can use anything you have on hand anything you find and you can also create your own and this is just like a little journaling spot that's going to go inside a journal next thing i made again i just used a leftover piece of scrapbook paper and a stencil on top and then I thought what am I going to do with this little piece you know it can be many things it can be a belly band in, in a journal horizontally or vertically you know it can be a pocket in a journal like this you can sew it down you know which is what I have here actually so you can do all sorts of things this is just to have you uh, give you some ideas all right so okay let's talk about the cracking here so again, I just used a leftover piece of scrapbook paper with the stencil, did that, and then sewed it on directly onto this page so it can go into a journal and become a pocket or two pockets, right? So when I folded it in half, you can see that little crack. Does it, does it matter? Does it bother you? It does not bother me because that's not going to be visible in a journal. Let's do an experiment. I want to see if it will lift off. I mean, are you going to be doing this with your projects? Don't think so, but you might have questions. I hope I'm answering all your questions. If you have any questions I haven't answered so far, put them down in the you know, comment section. Give me a like while you're at it, if you want to. All right, in any case, well, I thought maybe that's, will it lift off? Like if I try and lift the whole part off, of course it's not gonna lift off. It's, it's stuck on there. So I don't know if I actually finished talking about this one. So I just made it into a, a notepad. These are all things that are going to be added into journals here. I did this little thing. I made an envelope. This was going to be a page in a journal, but then I just sewn the sides down, sewn that on, and it's a beautiful little envelope for a journal. This one here, this is an envelope, an actual tall envelope. So it will have to be a tall journal. I added the butterflies here and then I thought, okay, now what? So anyway, I made this removable little, I mean, you know, where, where does it end? You can just keep doing so many different things, make so many fun projects, not just with texture paste, but with anything. Oversized tag over here. I did some splashes with acrylic paint, yellow and purple. Well, you know, it's not my favorite, but nevertheless it's a tag for a journal then this one here i actually didn't finish this one after i did the stenciling and let it dry i went in with my watercolors and you can see just just going crazy with watercolors and then obviously it's not finished i was going to have like a little focal point or a book plate or something like that there i might even go over it i'm going to do it now what's going to happen if i go over it just the raised bits. Did anything happen? I don't know. 
maybe I need a bit more ink on there. I'll be able to see when I look back if anything actually happened. But that's the whole point. You want to go in slowly, add different layers rather than go in with too much color and then have blobs and ruin your project. And now I want to show you some fails. They're not really fails, but some other things that have happened that maybe you can learn from, I suppose. I don't know. So it, this is a fail because of the busy paper underneath and the butterflies are just not showing through so you know if this will be potentially a little booklet when it looks like when it's folded in half like this it looks quite nice oh that looks quite nice like that but i think using backgrounds like this perhaps where there's no defined images is going to work better for the stenciling another thing i tried is it's not really a fail but it's something that i want to explore further and i wanted to show it to you in this video so i used uh, a foil just foil tape over the top of the impression perhaps i need to use a different type of a stencil underneath so that the image is more pronounced this is actually the piece that i used you can see so that's looking quite nice on there and i thought okay if i add foil tape what's going to happen a lot of it gets lost but it's definitely something i want to explore further now this one is a fail it's probably not a fail but too much wrinkling so i find that with this texture paste the one with the red clay maybe it was too wet because i find that all of those projects wrinkled really badly so there's quite a lot more wrinkling there than there is here i mean there's a difference between the wrinkle that was already on the paper because the paper was crunched up and then there's a difference between this kind of wrinkle so you can see that this was a little paper bag and it was just like a normal paper bag and look how wrinkled it got so anyway it's not really a fail i do like that look but it's something to look out for this is me cleaning the stencil i can rip those pieces up this is how i plan to use it anyway and then you know you can have little pieces like this that you can add to projects i don't know why i thought this one was a fail it clearly is not a fail it actually looks quite good uh, when you're using your texture paste, just be mindful that you're not going over the edge of the stencil. So a helpful thing that you might want to do, say for example, you want to use this stencil, but you only want to use these three flowers like I did here. Nothing else. You can see right in between these two flowers, there's that little cutout bit, but there isn't one here. You just cover it with masking tape. Or a sticky note or it doesn't really matter just cover it but what I wanted to say is when you're using the texture paste be mindful not to go over the edge because then you get I mean I was very very careful so most of my projects don't have that problem but you might get texture paste where you don't want it this one is also looking quite good maybe it was a fail because of this here anyway I'm gonna use all of this none of this is gonna be discarded or anything like that so this here is planned to be a journal page i'm going to pop this right into a journal not really a fail is it okay what i tried to do here is i wanted to create an envelope so i folded the piece down first and then i used the texture paste on top so then you get part of an image underneath it will be more obvious if it was white but i'm sure you can see what i'm talking about that's a really cool idea to use on envelopes but it was this texture paste that wrinkles everything so much and then when i was kind of putting it out to dry this moved and then created it's really not a big mistake like i wouldn't say i wouldn't call this a fail but it's kind of not as good as this you know you can't compare this and this i would call this absolute perfection look at this it's isn't it just it's beautiful and then you look at this you see what i mean because sometimes when i show my fails people say oh no that's you know i like how that looks and you can still use that and that's why i said i'm still going to use this 100 percent. none of this is going into the bin all of these things are going to find a use but i'm just saying you can get really good results and not so good results and then these are not fails oh, okay this one might be this is when i was trying to do the texture paste thing without using a stencil and it was my first very first attempt at creating something like those journals that i showing you this kind of thing so i learned from this what to do and what what not to do so you can see here i just applied texture paste and did some lines and stuff but the texture paste itself is kind of flattish there's no larger peaks and, and valleys you know 
So you really want to get a different kind of effect by moving your palette knife this way and that way and maybe doing like a wiggly thing like this rather than just putting the texture paste on and doing lines like I don't know what I was trying to achieve. It didn't really work out all that well but it taught me a lesson on what not to do and basically all i wanted to show you with these fails i shouldn't have said they fails they were my experimentation pages before making the actual projects that i wanted to share with you because none of this kind of comes i don't know ahead of time exactly how i'm going to achieve a different look or a specific look like i didn't know how to achieve this until I tried a few different techniques and these are my little trial pages and through this kind of experimenting I got lots of ideas as I was experimenting like as I was doing this I thought oh I can use my alcohol ink little photo things that I did a while ago oh I'll do that next and the ideas just start coming as you're working as you're experimenting in any case I wanted to share all the projects with you so that maybe you don't have to do all the experimenting Actually, I think you still do need to do some experimenting. It's always a good idea. Experimentation leads to revelation. I don't know, did I make that up or is that an actual saying? I'm not sure. All right, well, I hope that you feel inspired and I hope you just want to run to your craft room and make the darn texture paste and just get it out of your system. Let me know what you think. How do you feel about this? let me know how inspired you feel if you have any questions of course comment section down below is for you any videos i've mentioned linked in the description box thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye